Yeah, hi. Um, right, uh, I'm just going to run through some of the features, um, the working of this dynamic spectrum mapper um, to help people who are struggling a little bit with it. Um, first and foremost, it, it is just a compressor. Um, like any other compressor, um, the signal gets louder than the threshold, gets its gain reduced, and the rate at which it gets reduced, I mean, in other words, the amount of compression is, is actually controlled by the ratio control. The gain control is there just to make up for the loss of the compression, because compression was always downwards. We have the usual attack and release, or decay control. The attack controls how fast the gain will change when things get louder, and the decay obviously um, determines how quick it will recover after the event. We've got this knee control also, and the knee control uh, puts a curve around the point where the compression starts to uh, to make it a little kinder, and uh, it operates just like an ordinary compressor. The difference, of course, is that this compressor has um, lots of bands. It's a large-scale multiband with 16 or more bands running in parallel, and there's 16 lots of compression going on, one for each band. <coughs> okay. Um, in order to set this thing up sensibly, we have to do something to capture the spectrum of the music in order to weight the bands appropriately. Um, so we get, you know, we get, we get a starting point. So if I want to just uh, set this going, just to show you it, um, hang on, let's go. Bring that down a bit, so it's too loud. Right. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the spectrum of this this track here. I've set the gain right up at 24 dBs, and I've set the threshold down at minus 24, as near as I can get it, um, you know, to, to get a best, be, best chance of hearing the capture and whether it's appropriate. So I wait until the music is doing something typical, and I hit the capture button. If I hit it and hold it down, it averages over that period. If I click it and release it, it will just take um, a spot capture. So now what we have is the, the threshold here. Oh, hang on, let's move it so you can see it. Right. Um, the threshold has been weighted with the with the spectrum of the music itself over that period, and that's what it's compressing to. Everything above the threshold line is getting compressed. Anything that, that happened to be beneath it, you know, wouldn't be. So here it is happily compressing at 100 to 1 with a 24 dB of gain makeup. So that's 24 dBs of compression going on here now. And now I'll move that up a bit. You can hear this, it's relatively accurate. If I could rewind, Pretty good, eh? Not bad at all. Now if I decide that I want to change the spectrum a bit, um, I want to fiddle with it, I can do various things, hang on, bring it down a bit, um, we have a, a way of modifying that curve using these EQ style controls, but of course they're not EQs at all, they're just um, impressing the kind of response onto the spectrum capture uh, as determined by the knobs, so you know, let's do something crazy like the you haven't or so at 24 dBs on <clears throat> and what we're doing there is we are moving the threshold up so that less compression goes on in that region and obviously we can twag it about we can we can do the opposite we can do all sorts of silly stuff with it but generally you can sort of tweak a little bit here and there if you need to do something crazy at the low frequency end as well um, so now we're compressing the whole frequency much more. It's all a bit silly, but you know, it gives you the impression of what's going on. Right, so I'm going to uh, just forget that for the moment because it's a bit too silly. <coughs> um, various things that we have here um, is a link, a left and right link to preserve the stereo image. Um, and we also have a limiter. The limiter prevents signal getting bigger than and 0 dB up here, and if it does so, it, it will treat it, it will round it off. Um, it is, you know, it's quite sensible. If I just make that happen, let's see it happen. So I'm up the threshold to get more level, get some overshoot, there we go. 
the red indicates it's overshooting. If I put the limiter in, it doesn't. And up to about 3 dBs, it, it, it does a fairly good job of, of rounding things off without sounding awful. Let's bring that back down for the moment. Um, turn it off. The other thing we have, which is interesting, start the music again because it's going to run out. <coughs> the other thing you can do is while, it, while it's compressing, um, if you decide that you want to keep the general spectrum, the general frequency spread, but you don't want compression at all, you can freeze, hit the freeze button and it will just keep the levels as they are and um, it's acting like an EQ. And obviously it's not doing a lot here because the spectrum came from the original track anyway. But um, I can be a bit clever, I can be a bit clever with this. For instance, um, I'm going to try and do this, hopefully it won't get clobbered by copyright protection. But if I just kill this particular track, hang on, if I can go down here, and then um, stick a bit of, say, Sting, here we go, it's Englishman in New York. We'll capture some of Englishman in New York here. Okay, shut him down. Go back to our track. We've captured um, Sting. Sting Spectrum here, and we're now compressing our music to Sting Spectrum. So let's have a listen. That's a bit different. Can we get a bit more level? Oh, God, I just messed the mixed up. <laughs> anyway, not to worry, not to worry. Go back down here. You can hear a bit better. Sorry about that. <laughs> All the things I do. Now what we can do with this is we can freeze this somewhere where the effect is, is working quite well. Say here. And now it's like an EQ. It's not compressing at all. So we get, you know, the special with sting impressed upon our um, on our track, which is quite fun. Yeah, I kind of use that quite a bit sometimes. So let's get used. It's a bit of fun. So that's kind of how you impress one track's spectrum onto another. I mean, obviously I can keep it compressed if I want. I'll still compress. But sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes you just want to capture how it is. And then maybe, you know, have another spectrum mapper down line to actually do the compression. So I hope some of this makes sense to people. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. And I will do more videos later to, to explain what else I managed to do with this thing from time to time. So thanks. Thanks very much. I hope it's helpful. Couldn't resist a bit of instant mastering. <laughs> okay, that really is it. Bye-bye. Right.